Okay, so we have a word problem. A silver dollar is dropped from the top of a building that is 1,370 feet tall. Let's go ahead and draw a little picture of the building. So here's our building. And it is 1,370 feet tall. Let's say three. Use the position function below for free falling objects. And then it says, determine the position and velocity functions for the coin. All right, so they give us a formula. S of t equals negative 16 t squared plus v sub 0, or v naught, t plus s sub 0, or also it's pronounced s naught. So v naught is the initial velocity. So because the coin is dropped, it's going to be zero. If it was like thrown, it would have uh, a number. For example, this next example here, you see the ball is thrown down. So you would have uh, an actual number there uh, instead of zero. All right, so S naught is the initial position. So the initial position is the top of the building. So that's 1,370. So our position function, S of t is equal to negative 16t squared. V naught is zero, so that part goes away. Plus 1,370. Boom, there it is. There is our position functions. So that will be the answer uh, right here for S of t. The velocity is the derivative of position. So to find the velocity, V of t, all we do is take the derivative. So it'll be 2 times negative 16, so negative 32t. And the derivative of 1370 is 0 because it's a constant. So this would be the velocity. So this one here is the position. And this one here is the velocity. Part B, determine the average velocity on the interval 3, 4. So our interval here is 3, 4. The formula for the average velocity on an interval of the form a comma b is s of b minus s of a. So it's the change in position over the change in time. This is the formula for the average velocity. It's a really common mistake that people will use v here instead of s. It's a really common, common mistake. All right, so a here is 3 and b is 4. So we have s of 4 minus s of 3 over, and then just use matching, 4, 4, minus 3, 3. See how the numbers match. So s of 4 means we plug in 4 for all of the t's in our position function. So it'll be negative 16 times 4 squared plus 1370. Minus, then now we plug in 3's. So negative 16, 3 squared plus 1370 all being divided by 1. So I'm definitely going to use a calculator here. So let's see, negative 16 times 4 squared. So times 16 plus 1370. I'll do it in steps. So here I got 1,114 minus, and this next one is negative 16 times 9 plus 1370. So I got um, 12. You can do it by hand as well. You know, the 1370s should, should cancel. And we're just going to subtract here. So it's going to be negative 112. So it's negative 112 uh, feet per second. They give you the units in the problem, which is really nice. Now it wants the instantaneous velocities when t equals 3 and t equals 4. So basically, they just want you to plug in the numbers uh, into the velocity function. So let me just switch colors. So that'll be V of 3 is simply negative 32 times 3, which is 96. So this is negative 96. And again, the units are feet per second. I won't bother to write them because they're in the homework. And then V of 4 is negative 32 times 4. And 32 times 4 is 128. So this will be negative... 128. Okay, I'm feeling bad. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead. I'll write them in feet per second. There we go. It, it is important. Okay. 
Uh, D, find the time required for the coin to reach the ground. So the coin will reach the ground uh, when it hits the ground. <laughs> so here's the, here's the picture. So we want how long does it take for it to hit the ground? So remember, it's falling 1,370 feet. So we need our position function for this, which was negative 16 t squared um, plus um, 1,370. So this is the position after t seconds. So when it hits the ground, it hits the ground. In other words, uh, the position is zero. So to find the time required for the coin to reach the ground, you take your position function and you set it equal to zero because you want the time it takes for the coin um, to be on the ground. So in other words, the time it takes for the position function to be equal to zero. So we have negative 16t squared. Subtract the 1370, and that gives us this. Then divide by negative 16. That gives us t squared equals... Uh, 1370 over 16, let me use my calculator just to see what I get. Um, I got a fraction. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it as 1370 over 16. When you take the square root, you do get a plus or minus. However, um, you only want the plus because it's time. And it wants, uh, see how many decimals it wants. It's pretty picky. Three decimal places. Okay. So let me put this in my calculator and see what we get. So divided by 16... 9.253, so 9.2, that's quite a bit of time. So if you drop this coin from a building that's uh, 1,370 feet tall, it's going to be falling in the air for 9.253 seconds. I mean, you just start counting. One, two, three, it's still falling. Four, five, so it's going to take a long time uh, for this coin to hit the ground. So pretty intense. I guess that's a really high uh, place. Find the velocity of the coin at impact. So to do that, all you have to do is plug in this number. Oh, this is seconds, by the way. You just plug in this number into your velocity function. So the velocity was negative 32 times t. So in this case, we have v of 9.253. So it's negative 32 times uh, 9.253. This is called the impact velocity, the velocity of the coin at impact. So 9.253. 5, 3, using my calculator, negative 296, so negative 296, point zero nine six, and it's feet per second. I believe it wanted um, three decimals. Let me, let me just check. I think over here and look. Yep, and that's it. So kind of a nice problem. You know, it guides you through all of the steps. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. And remember, uh, the most important thing to keep in mind is that at the beginning of the problem, your uh, initial velocity is v naught, and your initial position is s naught. So once you plug that in, take the derivative, find your velocity, and then you just can answer all of the questions. Good luck.